G'day, Alec RJ here, and for this video I thought we'd just have a bit of fun and add some colour to our textures, because so far we've just been staring at grayscale. But to give a better idea of uh, terrains and height maps, if we could add some terrain colours to it. So I'm going to go to LibNoise. Now LibNoise is a great library that some very smart person has converted into C Sharp. And you can use these and these modules and, and add them together to make terrains similar to what we've been doing here with the noise. But for now, I'm going to copy this gradient and I'm going to create a gradient in Unity. And then instead of just using the grayscale color, we'll take the noise, evaluate this curve, this gradient, and apply that color to the texture. So we get colors, something outputting more like this, just for a bit of fun. So first off, we're going to have to generate that gradient. So I'll add it in here. Um, map colors. Now, you can assign your own colors in the inspector if you like. But um, for now, I'll just do it through code. I could show you how to... All right, I'm thinking ahead of myself. All right, now first we're going to also add a Boolean so that we can keep our grayscale and then switch between grayscale and color. Use grayscale equals false because grayscale is boring. So if that was true, we'd see what we have now. If it was false, we'd generate colors for our texture. So now let's go down and we're going to generate a color gradient. And we better call that in the start function. Okay, this is what I was talking about using your own. Okay, so let's make a public bool use inspector value rules. equals false. Now I just added this, if you wanted to assign your own colors in the inspector, you could do that and then set that to true and it wouldn't overwrite the gradient with the one that we're generating. So we'll say if don't use inspector colors, then we'll generate the one we're about to make. Okay. All right, so I'll show you what I mean there. So now we have this map colors here, and if you played around with these color gradients, you can set your color so you could make your own colors here. So if you made your own colors there, you'd say use inspector colors, but we're not going to do that. Okay, so back to the noise. I'm going to use all these values to create this gradient. So let's copy this out. And this might take a bit of code, so I don't know if you want to fast forward here. But if you've never played with gradients, you might find this information useful. Okay, so a gradient map colors equals new gradient. So we'll create a new instance of it. Now, the gradient has color keys, and the color keys are set at positions, which are called time. Okay, so here's a color at a position, which is time. Here's a color at a position, which is time. So we have to set our color and also set our time. So gradient color key, which is an array. Um, gradient color key equals new gradient color key. And we've got eight values. Okay, so gradient color key dot color. Hello? Oh. Color key dot color. Ah, let's, let's give the index. <laughs> color third times charm equals let's um 
generate a git, say git gradient color. It's very similar to the one above, I know. But I'm just going to copy these values into. I'm going to call this function and copy these values straight into it so I don't have to do much typing. So I'm going to say int r int g int b. And this is returning a color. So we're going to say return new color. Um, that'll be a float of r divided by 255. So these are values between 0 and 255. That same for G, B, and we'll leave the alpha alone. B. All right, so here we can say get gradient color and copy in these values. Simple as that. We'll do that for all of them. We got two by five. I mean, you could sit here with a calculator and, and work out the values and just specifically set the color, like here, just say new color, or even do this equation up here, but this is so I can just copy and paste it quickly, and not doing so much repetition. Okay, so there's the color, we now need the times, so gradient color key at index position dot time equals, and the same thing, we'll do a float, this will return a float, get gradient time, um, well that doubles, so I could say double value, and then return, cast as float, oh, let's try that again, cast as float, um, the value, now this is between minus 1 and 1, so we're doing the opposite of what we did with turbulence. We're going to add 1 to it, so it's going to be between 0 and 2, and then times it by 0 0.5. So it's value plus 1 times 0 0.5. Now they're doubles, so it should be all A-OK, -okay, except I'm missing a bracket. And value plus 1 times 0 0.5. Cast it as a float, return a float. So time equals get gradient time. The first one is here. They're all zeros except the last one, which is one. Um, oh. That's all looking pretty good. Now, the only other thing is, um, as well as these colors and times as keys, we also need to do that for alpha. If we look here, we have for the color and the time, and we also have for the alpha and the time. So we just need to set them both to one. 
So gradient alpha key array alpha key equals new two. Okay, so gradient alpha key position here dot alpha equals one f uh, position one it's going to be the same and then we have to do the time time that would be at zero and the end would be at one okay so map colors color keys equals our gradient color keys and our map colors but alpha keys equals equals our gradient alpha key okay so all that just to make a pretty rainbow let's see if that works so if we hit play whoop, disappeared there's our gradient sign in the inspector okay let's Let's take away that seam on the texture too. I know it's not important, but I'm just having a bit of fun. So, new texture dot um, wrap mode equals wrap mode clamp. That'll get rid of that line. Now here, this is where we're using our normal one. So we can say if use grayscale. We'll do it as we were doing it there. Else, we're now going to get a color. We're going to map color gradient dot evaluate at the position of time, which is our noise value, and that should be it. Let's hit play on that. So, oh. We've already done it because we set use grayscale to false. So let's duplicate that and move them and move those up and we'll make those grayscale. So there we go. And then what if? We go to our fractal noise. Now we're starting to see something that we could use for generating terrains. This is exciting. Let's turbulence this output. Mm. Kind of weird. Exponential. Okay, that's giving a clearer result than the grayscale. See here you could play around with the sharpness and things and really see how that is affecting our cloud images. Great. So what I'll do is I'll paste in this code and I don't know, I might um, I'll zip up this project and put it in a Dropbox or something. That'd be quite fun. Uh, I hope you enjoyed like this little series on noise and, and got your brain juices flowing and thinking about ideas it's like oh yeah we can proceed to regenerate some trains and make some noise and, and get some good maps going uh, this is stuff I've been playing around with a lot I actually have a set of terrain tools for texturing the terrain adding trees adding grass all kinds of fun stuff that I'm going to introduce after this but there is something else I want to cover first so in the meantime, uh, let me know what you think. Um, how's this new set of videos going? Is it fun? Is it boring? I'll try to cut the time down, but I love talking. But um, we'll see how it goes. Anyway, I hope you had fun, and I'll catch you soon. Bye.